One of my favorite things about reptiles is that they come in so many different colors, such as greens, red, blacks, oranges, white, and my favorite one of them all, blue. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over my top five favorite blue reptiles that are simply breathtaking. My name's Ryan and you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptiles. Let's roll the tape. So before we begin this list, I just wanted to say that every animal on it is gonna be just naturally blue, meaning no morphs, no genetic mutation, no specialty breeding, just simply blue. And coming in number five on the list, panther chameleons, specifically the Nose Bay locale. Now you're probably scratching your head like, wait a minute, they come in like oranges, yellows, red, whites, blues, all kinds of different colors. However, that's true. But depending on their locale, meaning like the geographic range that they come from, they have like special colors depending on that specific area. And Nose Bay ones are actually the ones that are actually just straight blue. Sometimes a little bit of green, but they're naturally blue and it's such a magnificent color. And in case you guys didn't know, Nose Malagasy actually means island. So Nose Bay panther chameleons actually come from a certain island in Madagascar and every panther chameleon on this island is actually blue. Sometimes they got a little bit of red speckles around the eye turrets or throughout the belly and that's actually really cool but really the blue is just what makes me just love these guys so much. And what makes panther chameleons like one of the most fascinating species is like the way they move their eyes in like different directions. Like just imagine if you're able just to like watch someone walk in front of you and then like walk behind you too. I don't know when I try to imagine myself doing that, I just imagine like a super drunk vision. And one of my favorite things about keeping these guys as pets is just watching them eat. The way they just like shoot out their tongue like a little pistol. I always think of like a little sniper when they get their prey. But fun fact, did you guys actually know their tongue can go up to 1.5 times the length from the nose to the vent of their body? I know, it's pretty freaking wicked, right? And like just being able to watch these guys like change colors is just so amazing. But however, they only change their colors based on mood. They don't change the like blend in and stuff like that. But I will say this, with Nose Base, they don't really change colors. It's like kind of brightness and darkness. So if you're looking for a chameleon that changes colors, Nose Bay ain't it. But if you really want that one chameleon that's just so mesmerizing blue, just totally magnificent. But I just want to tell you one thing about chameleons. Once you get your first Panther chameleon, you'll go up to the breeder two weeks later like, Hey man, you got like any more of those chameleons, dude? And coming in at number four on my list, blazing blue collar lizards. And man, these guys are absolutely gorgeous. I just love them. And also they're just like chameleons. They come in different locales and they actually, for a lot of people that don't know, native to the United States. And actually this specific species of collar lizard is called the Eastern Collar Lizard. But when it comes to the blazing blues, they're actually only found in one secret spot in the world of Oklahoma. And thanks to Nick Dawkai, he refined this line and they just made this really nice deep royal blue that there's no other lizard like it. And man, these guys are so amazing. And fun facts, these are actually one of the few lizards that can actually run on the back legs. You know, kind of like how the Jesus lizard does. And what's also really cool, if you look really carefully on the back of the head, they actually got this third eye that helps them like see any like hawks flying over them and stuff and like this is a really good defensive mechanism for them man like imagine if we had like a third eye and these guys are actually really small species of lizards they only really get up to about like 12 to 14 inches and you know their care is virtually exactly the same like a bearded dragon they like a hot spot usually of like 105 degrees they're so simple and easy to take care of and they're extremely hardy and you know in my opinion like these guys should be way more popular they're so freaking underrated and even though their care is virtually the same same as a bearded dragon, they don't get boring like a bearded dragon. Like, don't get me wrong, I love bearded dragons, but like, dude, a bearded dragon, once they get older, they just like kind of like just slop around and don't move. Like, they just kind of chill there, like job in the hut. But like, collar lizards, when they get older, they're super active. They love to run around, you know, just keeping a big enclosure and they love like perching, digging, and all that stuff. And man, and dude, these guys are so much freaking fun to watch them eat. Like, dude, when I like go in there and like try to feed them like little super worms, they'll all like run around and jump like little raptors. They're just amazing, dude. Dude. Honestly, these guys are seriously one of the best pet lizards ever. Man, you're just so cute, Lynx. I love you. Stink, bro. And coming in hot at number three on this list, electric blue day geckos. And man, this is probably the bluest reptile on this list and one of my personal favorites. So they're actually a micro dwarf gecko species that only get up to about three to 3.5 inches long. Wait a minute, how's me thinking? Are you a micro dwarf gecko? 
But these guys are actually an endangered species that come from Tanzania, Africa. And they're only found in about a five mile radius now in the forests of Tanzania. And what happened was that there was a lot of deforestation going on. And, and by 2008, there was just tons of illegal exporting of them. And just by the thousands, they did it by. And at the end of that year, they just decided to shut it down. And I'll say as a pet, these guys are only really a great display animal since they're so small. They're actually super zippy and flighty. So like if you're handling them and they just like jump off your hand, have fun playing cat and mouse with that. I've done that so many times that it's not fun. But when it comes to their personality, they're just so much fun. They'll just be hanging out in the open and they're just super alert. Like when you walk in the room, they all start like looking at you like little crows. And I just really love it. They're just such a beautiful, magnificent animal. And when it comes to actually like feeding them, all I really feed them is like fruit flies some bean beetles and like some gecko diet. But what's really great is like, since I can't really hold them, but I like to try to interact with them, I'll just like feed them some gecko diet, put on a little skewer, like feed it to them on the stick and they'll like come out. But sometimes I'll actually get them to hang out on my hand and eat out of my hand. It's really awesome. And when it comes to the care for these guys, it's so freaking easy in my honest opinion. You could just keep them like a little 12 by 12 by 18 exoterras, even though bigger is better, but you could just keep it a little bioactive setup. They just like it a little bit humid, like 60%, I would say is great for during the day. And I want to say that the females are actually like copperish green. They don't get that magnificent blue like the males. It's kind of like that with a lot of lizard species I noticed. But yeah, if you like micro-sized reptiles and the electro blue day geckos, hands down is the king of them. And coming at number two on my list, my dream reptile, the blue tree monitor. And man, how could it not be my dream reptile? Look at that dark deep blue, how it contrasts so well with that dark black pattern along its body. That slim and slender body just makes it look so elegant. And fun fact, this tree monitor only gets up to about three and a half feet long, but with this tail taken up the majority length of its body, and it's actually prehensile just like a chameleon's. Now this isn't a tropical arboreal lizard that comes from Indonesia that can be found on the Bantanta Island. And one thing that I really Really like about tree monitors is the way they flicker their tongue out it's so similar to a snake and the reason why they do this is actually like to taste the scents and see what's around in the environment and when it comes to the blue tree monitors they're actually a really shy species they're not like their other relatives like the green tree monitor where they're actually really active and like social don't get me wrong they actually are active but they're just really shy and if you wanted to like keep these guys as a pet and have them be social with you the best chance you have is getting one as a baby and really working with them and one thing that i love about the person they're actually really intelligent species like dude I was watching this video the other day on YouTube and just like look it's actually like solving a puzzle like in this video they call it the wacker roach and like man the way it's like sticking its arm in there just look at how he's just getting after that roach isn't that just super cool and man I don't keep any reptiles that are this smart but I really wish I did what if they had a reptile that was smart enough to do your homework and coming in hot as number one on my list, the white lip viper. This stunning arboreal venomous snake can actually be found throughout Indonesia, but what's really interesting is that it comes in multiple colors, such as greens, yellows, but the blue one can only be found on Komodo Island. While this snake is actually really small for a snake, it only gets up to two to maybe three feet long. And what's really cool about the snake, they actually have like these heat pit sensors in their upper jaw, meaning like they can actually see things in like thermal heat vision. Like let's say if there was a bird on another branch over there, it totally would be able to detect that through heat sensory. And the white lip viper actually has hollow fangs that injects venom into their prey when they bite them. And the type of venom they have is called hemotoxins. While this type of venom isn't necessarily lethal, if you were to get bit by it, you would totally have a bad day. While hemotoxin venom actually like destroys red blood cells, degenerates blood clots, and it actually may leave some rotting, meaning that if you did get bit by one, you have like internal organs bleeding, you know, the spot that they bit you, some of your skin may rot, making you look like swamp thing. But man, I remember the first time I ever saw this snake was on like Tyler Nolan's channel and man, the, look at the blues on that. That thing is just absolutely stunning. If I could keep one venomous snake, it would totally be the white lip viper. But actually, I did have a chance to see one in person at a reptile expo along the venomous trailer. And man, this thing is so much better looking in person. Like dude, photos and videos just absolutely do this thing no justice at all. And like dude, there is literally no other snake as gorgeous as this in my opinion on the face of the earth. And there you guys have it. That is my top five blue reptiles. And man, every single one of those species are just absolutely gorgeous. And guys, let me know what was your favorite blue reptile on this list and why? And if you guys think I missed any blue reptiles, please let me know because I love learning new things. Hey, Bozo. What'd you say? Don't forget to like and subscribe, my dude. All right, guys. My name's Ryan. This is Lynx. And you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptiles.